Gallup, the Democrats, so this is my opinion, they're going after President Trump, the man, as they gear up for a November. The man, the persona, the personality, going after that. Horace Cooper's with us, National Center for Public Policy Research. He's a fellow thereof. All right, Horace, first of all, do you think I'm right that the Democrats are going after President Trump, his personality, his character? Second question, if they do that, is that a winning strategy? Well, that looks exactly like what's energizing uh, Democrats, and it is an awful strategy. In 1994, I worked on Capitol Hill, and when the Republicans wanted to take over control of Congress, what they did is recognize you have to have something to beat someone. And they came together with an agenda. And it was that agenda that was sufficient to rest more than 50 House seats. This, I don't like the president, I hate him, I think he's an awful guy plan, isn't going to go anywhere. It re really. I, I, I do think there's a strong body of opinion in America which says we don't like this president. We're embarrassed by him. We don't like his language. We don't like his tweets. And I think there's a lot of people who will vote on that basis. And you, you, I'm wrong, totally wrong. In 1998, the American people knew that Bill Clinton had lied to them, had mistreated an intern in his office, and was clearly a serial womanizer. Do you know what? When Republicans said, we don't like him, you don't like him, you don't agree with what he has done, let's get more support for Republicans. Guess what happened? In a mid-year election, Democrats gained seats rather than lost seats, breaking a historic trend. You must absolutely have an agenda in this country that is attractive to people. What's being offered right now is, join us, we don't like the president too, that's going nowhere. Horace, you make a lot of sense. Welcome <laughs> back to the program. Good to see you again. Now, wait a minute. I've got one more for you. <laughs> President Trump reaffirming his commitment to fighting sanctuary cities. For our viewers' benefit, roll tape. Sanctuary cities in states like California put innocent Americans at the mercy of hardened criminals, hardened murderers. Sanctuary cities are dangerous, and we're going to take care of the problem. You know, Horace, uh, added to that, we have uh, three criminals who got away from ICE because uh, they were warned that ICE was coming by the mayor of Oakland. Three of them have been rearrested, two of them for beating up their spouse. So what do you say about that, uh, ending sanctuary cities? I am very, very troubled by this trend. Many senior Democrats, whether they're in the mayor's office, whether they're in the governor's office, or holding elected offices across the country, seem to think it is legitimate to engage in some kind of resistance against lawful federal authority. This harkens back to what we saw Democrats do in the 1950s and 1960s, where lawful activity and action on the part of the federal government was resisted. It was wrong then, and it is wrong now. History shows the error of that behavior. I would encourage them to take a new look at this plan and figure out how states and local governments can carry out their responsibilities without this outright defiance of federal authority. Like I said before, you make far too much sense, Horace Cooper, and if you're not careful, you're going to be back as a regular on this show. Can you handle that? <laughs> well, all I can do is tell the truth as I see it. And you're good at it, too. Horace Cooper, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. All right.